<laughs> All right, so today we have another podcast, the Big Blue News Podcast, but it's on Twitter space. We've got, of course, Phoenix Stevens with us and Nolan Fleming, my co-host. Let's, t- let's start talking about everything, though, with uh, Mark Stoops staying at Kentucky when everybody thought he was going to go to Texas A&M. What is that? Can we go, can we go first? Yeah, let's talk about it, Nolan. All right, well, I mean, I have no idea what to think. I don't know. Does anyone here know what to think? Uh, uh, because uh, there's so many conflicting perspectives, and uh, I know which one I prefer to believe. Not gonna say, but like, it's uh, it's weird. It's a lot more split than I thought it would be uh, about uh, what actually happened. But uh, either way, Mark Stoops is still the coach, and Mike Elko is the new coach at A and M, which is a weird hire. I thought it would be. I thought it would be someone a lot bigger than that. Whenever the, we found out Stoops wasn't was not going to be the coach of yeah. A&M, I thought it would be like I don't know for some reason I was still thinking Ryan Day or Dabo Sweeney or something like that. But, yeah, uh, obviously that's not what happened. It was Mike Elko from Duke, which is basically just a clone of Mark Stoops, You're but less wrong. successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And from my perspective, I woke up Saturday morning and I immediately heard the rumors. I started to text Nolan immediately. I'm like, I think Mark Stoops might be actually leaving to go to Texas A&M. And obviously, he didn't believe me in the morning. And then, obviously, UK played against Louisville. I was at that game. Very exciting game. A lot of fun. I love throwing yells down against the Louisville fans. Very fun game. And then, after the game, everything was calm for like two or three hours and then we heard the buzz that Mark Stoops was going to Texas A&M and I'm like what? I'm like no way I'm like I don't know if you're recording in a bomb shelter right now your audio yeah hey good point there yeah I'll go ahead I guess while I get stuff situated I'll go ahead uh, give my little two cents on it ma'am uh you heard the whispers of it, like, really right before kickoff, right, of the Louisville game. And you kind of sit there and you wonder, and you're like, why Mark Stoops, right? I mean, yes, he's had a lot of success here in Texas. But Texas A&M, you know, there were reports there looking at, like uh, Chris was talking about Dabo and Ryan Day, which I don't know if those are realistic hires anyway. I don't know why Dabo would be after what he's built there. And I don't know why Ron Day would leave Ohio State, which is one of the most, probably, you know, one of the biggest two or three, you know, most boosters, most resources, one of the best programs in the country. So I don't know why he would leave them. I can answer that real quick. It looks like a lot of people are really angry with him right now about the Michigan stuff. They've lost them three years in a row. And apparently there's a lot of people really disgruntled with him. I don't know. Uh, I, I, that's a weird reason to be mad at somebody. I know it's your biggest rival, but like, why would you want? Why would you want one of the best coaches you've had in like? Uh, I mean, he, he's pretty much kept the program stable since mm-hmm. Urban Meyer. Why would you want him gone? Yeah. Right. And then you wonder. Uh, so as the time gets closer, and it's like, okay, so is he really going to take this job? After the game, uh, someone asked Mark about the about the job and. He doesn't deny it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He doesn't say no. He's like, I need to keep the focus on the team. Which, that in itself, for us, you know, for us people who like to overanalyze things, that's, oh, great, here we go. Yeah. And, uh, man, I don't, th- I think, I mean, really, it's just the whole night. We all were there. We all know what happened where it was flip flopping between he's gone, he's not really gone, is he? And then, there was a time where he was gone, quote unquote. Yeah. You know, we're all we're all sitting there and wondering. You know, not even really wondering. We're just sitting there and we know, we know he's gone, or we think we know he's gone. And right after, I think it's like right after midnight or close to midnight, we get hit with the bombshell that Stoops is staying. Yeah. I'm... And. Um, so, I guess if I'm going to just say what I think happened, I'm going to guess, and I think this is the general assumption as well, uh, I think Stoops is just about gone, and then, 
the people of Texas A&M saw the backlash that they were receiving, you know, the backlash from the fan base about this hire, you know. Stoops isn't a good enough hire. He's going to suck. He's going to be even worse than Jimbo. And then, Seven and five forever. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I think the people at Texas A&M backed away and Stoops backed away. And I think that's how, I think that's how it went down. I will say that's, uh, I said I wasn't going to say what I believe. Now, since you said it, that's what I, that's where I stand. Uh, I definitely think that he was probably at least, at least heavily way, uh, heavily leaning towards going, but uh, obviously he didn't. I, I, I also think he's like the Greg Schiano. I think a lot of, I think the blowback definitely is the reason why he's at Kentucky. And I'm not saying, and, and I will say, I'll add this. I, I understand why people be like, a little frustrated with it like well, clearly you don't want to be here and all that but at the same time like I, I've never thought he didn't did not want to be at Kentucky it's, yeah. it's just the name of the game anymore is taking bigger jobs it's like a promotion exactly. it's, a, it's like a promotion yeah. yep I've seen where uh, people have kind of thought you know oh god it's going to be awkward it's going to be weird Stoops doesn't yeah. want to be here I mean what, what's there's no real reason to think that right I mean if if you Nolan or Chris got the jo- got the ch- hey ESPN's gonna call you that's hey, you not happening first of all well just go with me here yeah. you know and it's like hey you get your own radio you know you, you get to work for us at ESPN it's like well wouldn't you jump on that in a heartbeat yeah yeah it would be really right? stupid like, what, if I didn't what, wouldn't you it's, it's, I think it's dumb if you don't at least entertain the idea yeah. You're not right? wrong. So I don't I don't blame Stoops at all for at least looking at that Texas A and M job and uh, really considering it like he did. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. I don't either, but uh, I, I and then, you know there's also the thing of oh what if Iowa comes open this year? I don't really know if Iowa will come open or not. I'm, obviously, I don't know anything about Iowa, but uh, you know you never know. Yeah, I like I said. I, I agree. I agree uh, with uh, who just commented. By the way, that others will be coming for him. I legitimately think someone is going to uh, offer him a job again, and I don't have any basis on that. I don't know anything, mm-hmm. but I, 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 yeah, would not shock me if someone else said, "Hey, Mark Stoops, want to come be my head coach?" Yeah, you're not wrong. I don't think, yeah, people won't do it anymore. Like not this off season, but I think for like after every year now. This will be a thing. It's kind of like what yeah. to do with Cal and that UCLA job and that Texas job. Like, if we're gonna call Mark Stoops, there's gonna be rumors after every, every after every year, and that's just how it is. That's and that's a testament to Mark. He's really built this. He's really built this place up. You know what I mean? And he's really set himself. He really set a standard for himself as this great coach. Yeah, I think that's correct. Yeah, and you're not wrong, and I can read you some of what the players were saying to me, like some of the recruits who are in this current class, and one of them, like, one of them was completely surprised. They told me that, they're like, is this Mark Stoops stuff true? And I'm thinking to myself, dang, Mark Stoops didn't even tell you that he could be, like, leaving, because obviously, more than likely... He was going to leave, but then obviously a little pushback on Texas A&M side, and then Mark Stoops probably definitely reconsidered his options and decided to stay. But yeah, uh, like I said, I was reaching out to recruits whenever he was potentially going to accept the offer, and they couldn't believe it. And like I said, I'll read some of these quotes that uh, the recruits said to me. They said, "Feel great." Feels great. Glad he's staying to see this class through. It's a great class with a lot of talent. Another player said, I'm grateful he's staying. I'm glad to be a part of the Mark Stoops era. Uh, Another recruit said, Relief not being from the area. The culture of the program and the coaching staff was a huge part of my decision. A lot of programs bigger than Kentucky were recruiting me, but Kentucky felt like home from the first visit. If he had left and the staff involved in my recruitment had left too, I would have likely moved on. But he's staying, so bring on Sonny Day. Yeah. So. so they, there you go. Yeah. They're going to give it our perspective. And then, you know, I think we should probably move on to Miami. Because we'll let some people we got a really talk. Excited, we got a really excited basketball game tomorrow. We do. Uh, we so, do we think that A&M like, almost immediately rescinds that job offer? 
if Kentucky loses that game against Louisville. No, I actually think, think he's gone. Or do, you, or do you think Stoops is even more gone? If I think he's. I think he is gone. I think he's gone. I really do. I don't know, man. It would have been tough. What would he have gone though? He would have gone to A and M. A and M had offered him the job already. I know, supposedly. but A and M had apparently been in talks with Stoops for roughly a week or so. Yeah. Ten days is the number that's been given. It's ten days is how long him and A and M had been speaking, and they had had a full on interview. Yeah. The question is, I heard there were some rumors that he went to Texas after the game. I don't know if that's true I or don't not. Believe that, I, I, think, to be I think someone checked that, and that's not true. So yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's anything to that. I think but, someone checked. I think someone went as far as like checking if there were any flights from you know Lexington to College Station and back, and there wasn't. So. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's time we discuss some uh, Miami Hurricanes. What do you all say? Actually, real quick, let's get some people talking. If anyone wants to speak on anything, either if it's Stoops or Miami, go ahead and uh, request microphone access, and we'll let you talk for yeah, a minute we'll, or two. Yeah, we'll let you talk for sure. Or uh, ask questions, whatever. Yeah, come your on. can't be worse than Chris's, so you're all fine. Oh, no, my, Chris, you sound like you're in a literal cave right now. A cave? That's actually probably being generous. Is it, Chris, if you're on speakerphone, you gotta get off speakerphone. We know how this goes. Is it really that yeah. bad? Yeah, it's not that great. Yeah. Let's. We'll still, we can still publish it. We're okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm using my microphone on my thing, so hopefully you all will sound good. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, I think there's a person requested. I don't know how to check. I don't know how to... Chris, you're the host. Yeah, nobody has requested yet, but I, uh... I sent someone a request to join, so hopefully they'll join on. It says, hold on, uh, hold on, I'm going to approve them. I think I, know who, I think I can see, I think I just approve them, maybe, no? Request it, all right. I'm not right. really good at this whole uh, thing here. Yo, Wyatt, at least, Wyatt, Wyatt's, Wyatt Huff is in, the, in here. Yeah. Wyatt, you, you can speak at least. Yeah, Wyatt, I just invited you. Do we have one? We just invited Wyatt. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Wyatt. There you go, I'm here for the Miami talk. Oh, you're here for the Miami talk? Well. Yeah, I'm here for the Miami talk. Man. The audio. The audio, dude. The audio is going crazy in this uh, group chat right now. Is it bad? Oh, yes. Like, is it bad like mine? Oh, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Me and my wife picked this up a lot. <laughs> yeah. Are, are y'all like roommates in college? We are, yes, me and Wyatt. We're not in the same room, uh, technically, but we're in the same dorm, uh, I guess, different bedrooms. Oh. Anyway, yeah. Why, so, why weren't y'all roommates? Come on now. Well, I mean, we're in the same dorm. Well, they are. I need, I need my own room, you know. <laughs> you need your own room? All I know is, UK... <laughs> oh, it sounds awful still. Man, this is such a great... This... Or AirPods, yeah. try those. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have them both of my earbuds in. So. Can, I mean, can we get like a? Uh, Put the microphone close to your mouth. Put the microphone close to your mouth. Well, I'll stop it in my PlayStation headset. Would that work? Maybe. Probably be better. <laughs> All right. This episode is. It's, back, it sounds uh, like. In the meantime, anyone who's not Wyatt, y'all wanna? Anyone wanna talk? <laughs> It's, uh, you can put something in the comment section and we'll read it. It sounds like you're yeah. using a potato Wyatt right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This entire function thing, this entire this entire thing is going off the rails a little bit. Woo! Hey, there we go. We have someone in the comments. Turn volume down uh, first. Yeah. Turn but, the volume down first. Okay, but yeah, K Kentucky though, talking about Miami a little bit, they have to make sure they stop Nigel Pack. Man, he's... So great. Hello. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, dude, Nigel Pack has been lighting it up this year for Miami. Uh, I'm trying to pull up his stats right now, but man, he's one of the best players for Miami. Obviously, he played at K State yeah. previously. I'm looking up his college stats this year. So far, in five games, he's averaging 16 points. And three rebounds per game plus four assists per game. So he's sliding it up. He's shooting it from three point line 
40% and 46% overall. So he's doing very well. Kentucky will have to stop him tomorrow. Well, I'd say tomorrow what's going to be most important, for me at least, is seeing how Kentucky matches up with a team that plays a pretty vastly different style, to be honest. Uh, they're not at all. I mean, they are like us in a way, but they are a lot more physical of a team, and we really have not played played anyone like that yet. Maybe St. Joe's. But uh, see, I actually, I would actually argue that they're almost just like I think they do almost exactly what we do, but just better. Uh, I think I think Miami and Kentucky are very very similar teams actually, but I do agree. That Miami is a lot bigger, more physical, which I think that'll really, I think that'll be their biggest uh, strength against us. Miami is, as a team, Miami is shooting 46% from three. That's not one guy, that's not two guys, that's a whole team of guys. A whole rotation of guys shooting 46% from three. I mean, and they and they shoot. I think the most threes in the country per game. Yeah, I was watching highlights. I was watching highlights of them uh, before I got on here, and they really shoot the lights out. Yeah, uh, you, sound, you sound good now. By the way, Wyatt, okay. I, have, I have no headphones on. It's a straight phone. Oh that yeah, sounds better. Yeah. yeah, you sound so great, uh, Wyatt. Oh, uh, Poplar, Poplar is really good. He can get to the basket pretty easy, and they kind of use Norchad O'Meara out in the perimeter sometimes on offense. Yeah, they play like Kentucky. Like Miami, games. they have they have four players, four players that are averaging over fifteen points, five in double digits. Yep. And then the, and that's and that's really the bulk of their scoring. The, the next highest person on their team is Ford AJ Casey here, and he scores just three point two points per game. Only gets up a little bit. Yeah, the minutes are a big drop off. So, so Miami. Has if Miami has a has a has a glaring weakness, it's their roster depth, and they heavily rely on that starting five that they have to give them production. And I think where Kentucky has the best chance to win is where arguably our best players and Rob Willingham and Reed oh, Shepard are coming off the bench. Yeah, I, you know what I mean. It's it's, it's kind of like it's okay. We're not nearly as good as this, obviously. But it reminds me a lot of the 2015 team where here's our starting five. They're better than you, or at least just as good as you. And then whenever your yeah. team is sitting there with their hands on their knees, tired after 10 minutes of action, well, here come our backups <laughs> ready to do the same thing and whoop your 94 feet down the floor. Whoa, bro, That's profanity. What this team is. That's what this team is. Cause, I mean... You see Rob and Reed come off the bench, but we also have, like, especially when the, like, right now, we don't have the big back. But once we get Big Z and AB back, then we could put a duo on the bench and even bring them off with them because, I mean, the bench production is insane right now. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, first of all, about Reed and Rob coming off the bench, I know there's a lot of things about them. People, people want them to start. Yeah. And first of all, I love Reed and Rob. Like they're like Rob Dillingham is legitimately my favorite player I've watched since he, since Monk and Fox. Or yeah. Monk or Fox. Yeah. Probably Darren Fox. But um, honestly, I think them coming off the bench is perfect. Yeah. It is so fun. It's just so fun. <laughs> to have yeah. Those two guys and you're back the hole, and that's what it is. I mean, well, they've made the most of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, I don't think both of them should start, but you, I think you definitely have to consider probably starting Rob Dillingham at one point in the year. Me personally, I don't know if you do. Uh, it's not that no, I, don't I, don't think, don't I don't You know, it's not like I don't think Rob's not good. I think Rob's great. Um, but if this team is going to reach the caliber that we all know they can get, Final Four National Championship. You have to give the Justin Edwards and DJ Wagner as much repetitions as you can. I know they're starting yeah. to figure it out now. Yeah, they're starting you have to, to continue figure it out. to let you know. You got to put them in the starting lineup. You got to give them some serious minutes and figure things out. Now, maybe in late game situations, you know, once that under five timeout hits, maybe you can consider putting Justin on the bench for a while and bringing in Reed or Rob. But I think until that point, 
or you know until things are just seriously going wrong and you're in serious jeopardy of losing the games I think yeah. you really need to give Justin and DJ as many minutes as you can because straight up Justin's not the top pick in the draft like he was projected no, he's not, he's he's not, not right now like that. but if Kentucky is going to be the best team in the country and bring home number nine Justin has to play like a top five pick yeah. yeah, and you have to let him get to that point. The thing is, you don't you don't want Justin and DJ to have to set in those key moments because they're supposed to be the guys. Yeah, right? I think, and I think that I, people might disagree and say Trey Mitchell. I I think they're the two most important players in the whole. Yeah, game. one of yeah. one of them is, and I think it's I, I actually think it's going to end up being uh, Justin Edwards because uh, he has to has to turn it on eventually. Yeah. And, he, and we saw glimpses of that I mean, yeah. against Marshall even. He, he looked, for the first about 15 minutes or so, he looked great. He didn't play like a ton either towards the end of the game or in the second half. But uh, we really need him, especially in a game this big, because uh, the only game we've played kind of with this caliber against Kansas, he looked awful. Yeah. And uh, if, I love him, but he looked terrible. Yeah. And uh, same goes for DJ Wagner. He also looked awful in that game. Yeah, and if but, Wagner uh, and I think, Ed- I think hello, I think they'll be better. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll get it going for sure. I mean, it's not often you see that your best players kind of struggle like that. Yeah. No. And, and they've been struggling for you know the beginning yeah. part of the year, but I think come come middle of December, I'd say they will be two completely different players and. They'll be great, and if, like we were talking about earlier, if Wagner and Edwards were just average against Kansas, UK wins that game yeah. easily. Yeah. Which, how, you know, when you look at that Kansas game, obviously we all know Kansas is great, right? They're obviously one of the top yeah. three, five best teams in the country. And this Kentucky team, who has no big guy to guard Hunter Dickinson, they're two, you know, great. I know we're supposed to talk about the Miami game, but I know these and and like these freshmen, you know, DJ and uh, Justin didn't, you know, they didn't do anything really, and you you almost you blew it against Kansas, like, yeah. and that's not saying like, yeah, you know, yeah. when I say you blew it against Kansas, I'm not trying to say anything negative, really. I'm trying right. to say like you were in position to win that game, and Kansas was number one in the country at that time. That's why you take a lot of positives from that game, you know? Yeah. Right. That's what I did. Even yeah. even without the three seven-footers, you know, your 21 feet of big men, as we like to say, you know, you, you, yeah. you competed. And I think, right. I think that's a big testament to Trey, who I think Trey will be very – pivoting back tomorrow. Trey will be very important for tomorrow against Miami. Because, I mean, they're big man. He's 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 only six foot seven, right? Like he's, he's not seven foot he's two. Really, he's really physical. But he's yeah. exactly he's two hundred forty pounds. Yeah. I mean, he's, I think, he's gonna think, he's gonna he's gonna try to bully Trey. Yeah. I think a lot of it yeah. goes back to gang rebound. You know, I mean, go and help play. That's what I said a while ago. on I yeah. think I posted uh, gang rebound. And you gotta help Trey as much as you can. Yeah, and Adu Fierro has yeah. been a beast this year with getting rebounds. Yeah. I mean, tip slams. The Adu Fierro in that Kansas game reminded me of Marcus Lee during that Mitch game, Michigan game in the NCAA tournament. That was crazy what he was doing. Uh, even the Marshall game, even the Marshall game, he was playing really good, and I, I watched him like he was making those hustle plays that you need right now. He's like Shepard to me. He's like Reed, where he does not have to score points to be effective. Uh-huh. He was, I mean, he has his moments on defense where he does break down a little bit. Uh, he did it at least a couple times against Marshall, I noticed. But, on, but rebounding the ball, he might actually right now be the best rebounder on the team, uh, which is weird, but he might be. And uh, he might be the second most important, uh, not, I won't say player because I said Edwards and Wagner, but like, Second and most important yeah. aspect of the game. Yeah. Like, well, I will say it. You were, yeah. And I will say why what you were saying about uh, 
the Kansas game without trying to be optimistic about it. I will admit the first hour or hour and a half after the game, it was more like a well damn feeling. Like I was like, we should have won that game. We should have, yeah. whatever. After that, after I was out of that uh, state of mind, I guess it, it, that game is going to end up being probably the best thing to happen to the team. Yeah. As weird as it sounds. You're probably not wrong. I think just proving, proving to not only the, the country, but to yourselves that you are as good as pretty much the number one team in the country I think it went a long way for them. And I think, uh, I still think they're going to be hard to beat for the rest of the year. And I think yeah. against Miami, they have a very good chance. Also, Rowdy Rupp, we need, that needs to happen. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be at, the hey, are, are, we all going, are we all going to meet up tomorrow before the game? I'm going to be there. I suppose, I suppose so. Uh, I'll be getting there around, I think it's five is when the media people come in, so... I'll be getting there around five. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be there at two in the third line. I have a student ticket for this one. Sadly, I won't. I have an upper. I'm in the upper deck this time. I got to take it off of somebody. Sadly, I won't be a media member, but I will be at the game. So that means we all need to meet up and like have a great time before the game and during the game too. Yeah. Tailgate for Kentucky basketball. Tailgate for Kentucky basketball. Hold on. I'm I'm about to go on a great rant here, which y'all may want to turn me off the nerves. All right. Why do we not do that? You're why, gonna... why do we not tailgate for basketball? It would be funny. This is the greatest, this is the greatest place in America for basketball. Yeah, well, oh, well. At the same time, too, I mean, I don't know. It would be pretty weird. And all. Besides, besides why? Disney World, why besides be Disney World, that's my happy place. How have the campers and the, the tents and the barbecue and, you know, the go-cats and... Where where will we where will we tailgate at though? And if you don't want to use curling, call him general. I don't. General Calipari. General Calipari. General Calipari. General Calipari. Sometimes somebody somebody get that going. Somebody. I'll tell I'll tell the all cats tongue. He can try. That would be great. Uh, anybody here want to talk? Uh, eight people listening. Yeah. Uh, we we really do. I'm not going to say who. Someone just, just told me that they're listening here. One of, one, of these, one of these people here listening told me that this is not the greatest place in America for basketball. Yes, I, I, know, know, who I know, know who it is. I know who it is, too. There is no place. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Do, place do they have a check mark? In Kentucky. We well, I mean, don't I mean, specify around right here. I would, I would give it away. But. Yeah. We don't specify around here, no. Maybe I, he does, maybe he doesn't. Maybe it's a horror? Maybe, 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 it's a, yeah, anyway. maybe it's someone that went to the University of Kansas, or Kansas maybe. University, I mean, I should say, Kansas University. <laughs> Hello? Now he's speaking. Hey, has anyone ever been to Allen Fieldhouse? Allen Fieldhouse? I'd prefer to stay away from that place, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Allen Fieldhouse. You know what happened the last time Kentucky went to Allen Fieldhouse? It was beautiful. The, 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 floorboard, fell off. the floorboard fell off. That's what happened. <laughs> Yeah. This is a shame. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob. Who needs Allen Fieldhouse when you have Rip Arena where all the old people can't stand and cheer? They have to sit down in their chairs. If, they don't, if, they, don't, if they don't get up, if they don't get up, they have to. I might have to. I might have to stand up and try to get people going. They have to. I, I, I wish I was in that student out. section. I really wish I was in the reserve seating. I really you wish want, I could you get want me to, You want me to try to sneak you around? No man, I'm. I'm no, you're, <laughs> I tried to. I tried to go there, home for there for the. What was it the St. Joe's game or whatever? Whoever we played Monday. I think it was St. Joe's. Yeah, I was with Phoenix. I tried to I go over there with Phoenix for that one. I tried to go over there with Phoenix, and uh, he said, "You got a ticket?" I go, "Oh no, I'm over there in the eruption zone." So I'm, 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 I'm not here to promote, uh, you know, any. any uh, Potentially unlawful. I don't know. It's probably not even unlawful. It's probably just it's not unlawful. unlawful. It's, it's against, against their policy. It's bad ethics. But um, oh, I just think now I will say okay. I, I, I don't know why tonight. I don't know why we're going on tangents. Yeah, I know, but it's fun. This yeah. is gonna make for a good uh, list. Great. This is great. I love this. Yeah, this is going well. Yeah. But I, okay, Jake. Okay, listen, Jake. It might be. Well. We may not be the greatest. And I'm going to tell you why. Because 
First of all, why don't we... Hang on, hang on. Before you get going, I want to remind Mr. Polacek that we are the winningest program in history of college basketball. So there you go. All right, okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we don't do the tailgating, right? I feel like that's a good first step. Yeah, tailgates go on. Why not? Have people... Uh, hey, Jacob, Jacob. Jacob. Jacob is... Jacob, a, no, 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 he's just... He's just he was just telling me he's preoccupied. He's listening, but he's preoccupied. Oh. oh. Okay, I'm, I'm, about to hop on the I'm about to hop in the shower. I'll get you guys back. <laughs> you get us back. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I wasn't going to mention the shower, but... Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was all here. Anyway, anyway y'all go ahead. To start with tailgate. And then, you know how you know how Kroger Field... You know how loud those blue white chants can get? Why can yeah. we not do that at Rose? Uh, I, it's because of the old people. It's because of the old people. What's the average age, do you think? What do you think the average age is of the lower section? I think it has to be 70. 60. 60. 60. 60. Not counting the student uh, section, but the yeah. Guys, the younger guys bump it down a little bit. Yeah, but so if we're not counting the student, student section, section yeah. let's not count yeah. the student section. Let's say, like, 60-year-olds, I would say. It is so old, though, because it's all the money. It's all the money. And, uh... I get it, but like, I don't keep the donors happy, whatever. Uh, Kelly Craft and Joe Craft. I don't, I don't, I don't I get it. Because, I don't get it because you have the paddock at Coker Field, and that's where all the rich people go, but, it like, at Rump, yeah. Like, it just doesn't affect the atmosphere at Coker Field, but then, I just don't understand why Rump is different. Well, let's all, let's all make that a goal for ourselves. Uh, y'all are aspiring journalists. I'm not necessarily a, a journalist, I don't guess. But, like, let's all make a goal to be in the paddock when we get older. We just get rich. Don't even worry about media yeah. passes anymore. Let's just get in the paddock. We can actually, yeah. we can actually bring some life to the paddock. <laughs> we could definitely bring it. We could absolutely. Heck, we could put us next to the Kraft family as basketball games. Yeah. Yeah. And I like less than those paddy pony, paddock pony pickers. <laughs> paddock pony yeah, I said it was like in the student section, like all year. I sat like right next to that. <laughs> it was wow. pretty fun. By the way, since we've gotten so off topic, I'm gonna get, try to try to get a little bit on topic here, which I know why it's a big fan of this. Uh, can, you know, the, the thing about Miami, another thing that we didn't go over. It's not Good just. Thing. It's not just their players. Blast. You know what? No, I'm going already. But this is gonna be. As much as as much as it's going to be a battle on the court, it's going to be a battle on on the sidelines there between Calipari and Jim Laranega. I agree. I agree I've been, I've been what, what a, I've been a fan. Trip. I've been a fan of Jim Laranega even before the run in the NCAA tournament. Me too. I fell, I, think he's a great coach. I, fell in, I fell in love with him during that, but I appreciated him way before that, and I'm I really want to meet him. I, I appreciate uh, you so much, White. I said I appreciate you so much, Wyatt. <laughs> I, 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 I like, ever since I learned about the George Mason run, which I, I mean I wasn't old enough to watch the George Mason run, I was not at all. But like, uh, you know, it, it, that makes you gain respect. It's the same respect I have for Shaka Smart as he did with yeah. the VCU. Yeah, yeah. Like I hated I hate Tennessee, but I have respect for uh, Rick Barnes. Uh, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, exactly. I have to, ever since, ever since, ever since, what, the Elite Eight or Final Four? My He's been in the Final Four. My boss man, Sean Smith. He's been in the regular season coaches of all time. But, yeah, my, I don't my know boss man, seen him do anything. My boss man, Sean Smith, went to a practice at Tennessee, and he told me a lot about what Rick taught him, and ever since he said that, I have a lot of respect. But you haven't met Rick Barnes yet. I can't expect that. I hate Tennessee. There's no doubt that Rick's a great coach, but no doubt. I mean, the guy got then the guy literally. I don't know. Did he get offered to be the head coach of Kentucky? I know there at that point he was when he was at Texas. He did or something. Someone they talked or something. Whenever we hired either Billy or Tubby, I mean not Tubby, Billy or Kyle. Something like that. And that's what is that? I wasn't either, but wasn't it Tom Izzo who yeah. legitimately that, that, was almost the head coach? That's a that's legendary crazy story. That almost, almost all of us here, or I know at least three of us, 
but we're only allowed for cow. That's just, yeah, okay. definitely uh, us. Back to, back to Miami here. Uh, someone's been commenting here. I'm gonna try to pronounce that correctly. J J Hayes J Hayes Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, they mentioned the over under for the Miami game. Go over. It's going to be. It's going to be over two hundred points. I'm put the whole bank account on it. Two hundred. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, no, two hundred. Two hundred's a little bit much. No, nah, bro. I think one sixty three is reasonable. I think it's reasonable. One sixty three and a half, whatever it was. But uh, I still think the over. I I I'd absolutely take the over. Yeah. Bet your whole bank account on the over. No. No. Four and a half now. Yeah. Four and a half. It's, I'm not one to. I don't like betting Kentucky games, whether it's no, for or against them, no. because it's bad juju for me. But I would, if I were to bet, I'd bet Miami to cover, right? Six and a half. I don't think it is anymore. They went down. Four and a half. It's now. Okay. Four and a half. I would. I think. My, uh, listen. I think. So I think right? Kentucky. We'll get to our predictions probably here in a second. But I think Kentucky will win this game just because it's at Rip Arena. Like, I think that'll literally be, like, the main difference. I think this is going to be a great environment, starting with that uh, Rowdy Rupp. Yes. Uh, Rowdy Rupp is going to go wild. All of the young people are are aware of that, and I think that's actually going to make an impact. You know what? Matt Sack, Matt Sack graduating has took a big head on the student section. I think I'm it did. Going, Everybody sits down the whole time, then I stand up, and then everyone tells me to sit down, and I feel awkward. I'm like, okay, I'll sit down. Jesus. Hey, don't, I'm missing that. Don't I'm sit down. Okay, you know what you have to do then, Nolan? You have to stand even harder. I don't know how you do it. Maybe I'll need to take you six. Dude. No, 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 no. Me? Me? me. Yeah. I, don't, I think it was Missouri or Tennessee. No, it was Missouri, I think. Me and Wyatt, we're, we're, at we're, at we're at the Missouri football game. And someone told us to sit down. Sex and a we, we looked at the guy like he's an idiot because he's an idiot. Why would you sit down at a football game? That's weirder than a basketball game asking someone to sit down. I don't down. think you should Everybody sit down. Everybody stands up at football games. Back to Jacob's point about why Kentucky not so, well, why Kentucky isn't the best place for college for basketball. Because, because we have people sitting down. Yep. Like, you, you're, you're here. I know Jacob can say more on this, but you hear the fog through the TV. Oh yeah, and it's crazy. even Cameron Indoor, even at Duke, they're that way. At North Carolina is a little bit just a bunch of nerds, but at least Kansas has actual real fans. North Carolina is a little different. It's a little bit like us, but it's also like Allen in a way. I don't know. It's weird. They have the old money, but they also have we have we money. have we have the potential to be a, a really insane atmosphere. We we have to bring it because we are them. We have been. Look, Look at all the times we have been. I was yeah. at the Kentucky Alabama game in 2022 when Grady uh, hit that three, and that was the most insane. electric crowd noise I've ever heard in my life. And that includes yeah. the Kentucky Florida game I was at in football. That was oh, electric. Yeah. 2021. But, yeah, 2021. I was there. I was there too. Hey, right. we got something in common. That was fantastic. Right. Like, you know, had. Well, no That's invite you all. Best crowd I've ever heard at Rip Arena. What is it? It wasn't. It wasn't men's basketball. It was a women's basketball exhibition game against Kentucky State. It was, I think, I think it was that game. There was, uh, it was this year, just a couple, couple weeks ago. It was elementary school day. And, uh, <laughs> I can only see where this is going. There were probably four thousand little kids. Yeah. And it's the best environment I've ever heard in Rep Arena. That's not near, not near the fullest I've seen, Rupp, but definitely the loudest and rowdiest I've seen. When, when you when you told me that, how much did they? How much of the sections of the arena did they feel? Okay, so the, for women's games, the uppers are completely blocked off. Okay. And so yeah. like, you know, the black things hang down. But yeah. I would say of the lower bowl that's left, they probably fill up. 35, 50% of it, somewhere, 35, 45% of it. It'll be lower than that, it'll be lower than that for the rest of the year. It's, it's, I don't, man, if we get into women's basketball, I may start crying. But, <laughs> that's uh, a job, man, you, you, yeah,
shout out to my main KSR gig. I love, I love doing it to death. But covering this team can be painful just sometimes. <laughs> Only sometimes. <laughs> and who wants to see them do well. And let me, I'm going to say this real quick. Kyra Elsey is such a nice person. I've, ta- I've had the pleasure of talking to her on a couple occasions now, just being on the beat and everything. And she's really one of the best human beings I've ever met. But, you know, someone brought this, someone said this one day, and I mean, they're right. It's, it's a business here. It says, right? It's, it's why we fired Joker in football. It, this is a business, and we're here to win. And it's why Kyle Perry, Perry, Perry's seat was a lot hotter than anyone ever expected uh, at the end of last year. Yeah. Right. No, I, I'm not saying I wanted Cal Perry fired. That was, uh, honestly, I think no. that was inherently no. stupid. Yeah. People are crazy. I think yeah. everyone wanting him fired was nuts, and it's especially nuts now. But yeah. uh, we were underperforming, that's true, and you definitely did need to ramp up the intensity on him or something yeah. like that. All right, so now that we're all here, and we're... We've Jacob's talked about in the shower. shower. Jacob's in the shower, but it's okay. We're all back. We're good. Jacob's back. Ah. All right, so now that we're all here, <laughs> what are our predictions before? Because I want to talk about something else after we do this. Real quick okay. Before we get off. I'll start. Our I'll, for the mind again. I'll take. I'm gonna go Kentucky 84, Miami 74. Chris. Oh wow, that's a blowout. I think it's going to be very close, but UK wins, and we are going to take that over. We are going with 89, Kentucky, Miami 84. UK wins by five, baby. So the Kansas game. The Kansas game, except in our favor. Oh, yeah. okay. 8377 cats. And me myself, I will go we'll say 8992 cats. Uh it's gonna be a lot higher scoring than I think. Jacob, if you're actually here, uh what do you think real quick? Uh, I'm gonna say Kentucky ninety, Miami eighty two. There we go. Alright, right before we get off, Jacob, you probably won't have much to say. Chris, I doubt you will too. WWE! I'm so ready. CM Punk, baby. My TV channel is literally on USA right now. Who? Who is this, man? This is the greatest thing to happen for WWE and God knows how long. I I guess I'm just nostalgic for my, like, nine-year-old self. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, before we talk any more about WWE, John Calipari just said Kentucky is expecting one or two more commitments here in a while for 2024. Whoa. Uh, doing, doing what now? He's the team is expecting one to two more commitments for this class, man. I have to say what? Billy Richmond and Carter Knox. Is that who it is? That's who I'm guessing. Billy Richmond is a lock. Uh, that's yeah, that's the other one. one. Uh, Carter Knox kind of. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if you have Billy. The pressure, the pressure has kind of fell off on Carter. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jacob's here, so I mean, he follows it a lot too, but. The pressure's kind of fell off there. I, I think he wanted to take a few more visits. But I don't, I'm not sure who the other guy is. Carter? I mean, I think it would be Carter, but I know Billy for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah I think you got, you got it might, might be a late decision. No, no, no. Yeah, um, but uh, I, I would think Billy, and then uh, I think they'll kind of play it by ear with if, if they want Carter. Uh, play alongside Bill here if they go for someone else. There's always cool. like a Darren Peter three class, but yeah, uh, talked about that lately. What do you think about VJ Edge call? Oh, anything on that? Because uh, I haven't heard anything. I've heard St. John's for right now. Oh, okay. St. John's, the fighting Rick Pertino. <laughs> the Pertino ticket. Hey, that's a that's a big one. I love VJ. I love VJ. I would like to have him. How about okay, Jasper Johnson, you all, reclassifying? <laughs> What's that? I said, what about Jasper Johnson reclassifying to the class of 2024? I, I expect him to stay in 2025. Yeah. So they, yeah. Sam Wyatt actually had a conversation where I don't remember what class he was in, Jasper. Yeah, that was today. You asked me, I was like, I don't think he's reclassed. And I looked at his 25, and I was like, oh, okay. He's still in 2025, but he has the option to classify. Uh, remain pretty adamant that he's in 25, but he always has that option. So yeah. I would think. By the way, I just want to say uh, we clearly killed him 
this podcast. As soon as I brought up WWE, I think everyone left. Yeah, 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 they all left. It's all right. We're gonna it's all right. We're gonna it's all right. We're gonna it's all right. All right. On the YouTube and uh, whatever whatever platforms we're on. I, and then I told well, I told I told you, Phoenix. I said I haven't been this excited for a while in months. Like I'm so excited. Excited. I have, the, I have not watched a live WWE televised program that is not a pay per view in years. Probably since yeah, I was I, like I always, I always watch it re- on record. I don't yeah. really watch it then. That's I watch pay per views. All right. Anybody have any final thoughts about the Hurricanes before we all hop off here and then the rest of this TV USA Network? Oh. Uh, guard yeah. play. Guard play will be key. Yeah, guard play will be key. Let's go. DJ Wagner and just DJ Wagner and Justin Edwards are the most important factors of the game, and Justin Edwards yeah. especially is going to have to turn it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've uh, got to help Trey out. Yeah. You know, I asked for you know what I asked for a scoring prediction, but I didn't do the MVP. So all right, we're going to run through it one more time. Nolan, who's your MVP? <laughs> <laughs> we did tell us to go MVP. Um. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Rob. I think this just feels like a game where he does something crazy and he's gonna be on Sports Center. Right. Well, I will, I will take DJ Wagner. I think he turns it on and has a big game. Goes for 25. For himself, who do you think? I'm going to give y'all a surprise pick. I'm going to give y'all Trey Mitchell. It's a good pick. Trey Mitchell, and then Jacob Palachek himself. The goat. I mean, zero. I'm gonna go with the dude, the arrow. Yeah. And that's wonderful because that right means there. we all have different MVPs. I'm going Justin Edwards. I think it's his coming out party. But I think that just about wraps us up, guys. Yeah, I think so right. too. It's been Chris, it's been almost Chris an hour. Yeah. Chris, send us off. All right. Well, thank you all for listening or watching. If you are listening on uh, YouTube or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, we appreciate it. And this been a, this has been a great podcast. Obviously, you. It was on Twitter Space, but y'all should definitely join our Twitter Spaces in the future. But thank you all again, and this is Chris B. Smart Signing Out, along with Nolan Fleming and whoever else is in this. Go Big Blue. Let's do this more. Yeah, let's, let's do this more. Let's do this more often. This was fun. Yeah. This was fun. It was. I agree. All right. Thank you all again.